Hello and welcome to the Print on a Man Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Bonarks, here with my co-host, Carrie Egler. And in today's episode, we're discussing different cool and interesting AI tools to grow your t-shirt or apparel business. We're gonna be explaining what is AI, the benefits of AI for your t-shirt or apparel business, and we're gonna share 10 super cool and interesting AI tools to help grow your brand. But first, real quick, before we begin, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast. It helps us reach new listeners and it helps you never miss an episode. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a listener. We are so glad you're here. And just before we hop in, here's a quick word from this episode's sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by Gelato, the world's largest print-on-demand network. Gelato enables individuals ranging from e-commerce entrepreneurs to artists and creatives to establish their own global business. The magic of Gelato is that they focus on local production. The item being delivered is produced in the country that the order is placed almost 90% of the time, leading to many benefits such as lower costs, faster delivery times, and most importantly, reducing carbon emissions. The focus on tech to knit together over 130 producers production facilities across 32 countries is truly unique. Thanks to this, they currently have the highest customer satisfaction score in the print-on-demand industry on Trustpilot. To check them out for yourself, go to sixfigurefounder.com slash gelato and use the discount code POD playbook, all capital letters, to get 60% off your first order when placed within 72 hours. That's the number six figurefounder.com slash G E L A T O. You can also find the link and discount code in the podcast show notes or in the video description on YouTube. What's up, everybody? Adrian here with Carrie, and we are super excited about this episode because we're going to talk about something that has really taken off in 2023 in particular. And what we're finding is that a lot of people already are starting to adopt AI tools to save time, to save money, and to grow their sales. So in this episode, we're gonna be having a lot of fun talking about some really cool tools that we're seeing, some of which we're using, and we just wanna talk about them and share them in case any of them are interesting to you that you might wanna try for your business. But before we get into that, Carrie, what's going on, my friend? Man, uh, I'm doing good, man. I hope you're doing well as well. I know you're uh, traveling a lot, and you're in a different in a different location every time we see you. Uh, I'm mid move. Yeah, you're on the move, bro. The digital nomad life. Um, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, yeah like I, I don't know if you notice the background. It's a little bit different. I'm in a different place right now. I have been in Vancouver for the last four months. It was amazing. My wife and I, we were snowbirding where we were more, more like reverse snowbirding where we were escaping like hot Phoenix summers and just coming back to Vancouver to spend time with family and friends. And now, dude, we are on our way to move to Southern California. So Crazy. I cannot wait. We're moving there on Thursday. We're visiting family right now. And that's why I'm in a makeshift office. Um, but by the next recording, we'll be, we'll be in San Diego, man. I cannot wait. So for our audio listeners, if you're just listening on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, Adrian has like a like a painting of some of some elephants, like in the African Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> like he could he could be in you could be in Africa right now. We don't know. We don't know where you're at. <laughs> oh man. Awesome. Um, I'm pumped about today's episode, man. We're talking about AI and uh we've we've I think we've done one AI episode and um I wanted to do this episode because I wanted to talk about some specific tools and like use cases. Cause I think like mm -hmm. we hear a lot about AI and, and, and it, I think it's, it's for me at least, sometimes it's just like, just goes right over my head. Mm -hmm. And so like, what are some actual ways that you can use it in your business right now? It's advancing mm -hmm. at a insane pace. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to talk about today, like what are the actual like tangible tools and ways that you can use it in your e-commerce business? But I know Love we it. also, before we get there, we got to talk about something very special. Uh, We've before got we get two things, two things, two okay. things to talk about. You go and review first. 
Let's do it. All Why right, not? Get the review. Let's get do the review, review first, and we'll talk about the second thing, and then we'll jump into the main event. All right. So we're shouting out our listeners because you guys are awesome. We really appreciate you. We're so grateful for every review and every episode we try to shout someone out. So uh, we are running pretty low on Apple reviews. So I just want to make uh, an ask of anyone listening, if you wouldn't mind just if you are listening from Apple Podcasts, if you wouldn't mind just pausing and just writing us a really quick review on Apple Review, we would be really, really grateful for that. And we are shouting out reviews all the time. So thank you in advance. But this review is coming from one of our international listeners. Shout out to Emmy B. Emmy B, thank you so much. She is coming from Great Britain. And we recently received a really nice five-star review from her where she says, I came across this podcast when researching print on demand resources. Really glad I stumbled across it. Great advice from the presenters who clearly know what they're talking about and are passionate about the subject. I've been binge listening. I love hearing that. Uh, I've been binge listening to these every day on my morning dog walk and getting loads of ideas for my first Shopify store. Thanks for giving up your time to make these. I really enjoy them. Thank you, MEB. You are amazing. We appreciate you so You're much. You're awesome, Emmy. Yes, we're really grateful for you for being a listener and really grateful for you taking the time to leave us a review. So with that, Carrie, item number two of discussion. Do you want to talk about that for a yes. second? Yes. Okay, item number two. This is very important. I want you to just, if you're listening on audio, I need your attention right now. If you're, listening, if you're watching on video, give me your attention for five seconds. We have, actually longer than five seconds, but we have Lock in. our last two-day Grow Your Brand workshop of the year, our last one of the year of 2023, coming up on October 4th and 5th. That's Wednesday, October 4th, and Thursday, October 5th. This is a two-day training and coaching workshop for apparel and print-on-demand sellers. It is 100% free, and if you're listening to this, there's a good chance it is for you. So, If you have a brand right now, if you have an apparel brand, a print-on-demand brand, or even an e-commerce brand, you're wanting to grow it and scale it up, and especially if you're wanting to do it in this fourth quarter, we want to personally invite you to the two-day Grow Your Brand workshop, and you can go register. It's officially open for you to go register, claim your seat. We do have limited capacity uh, because we do these live, and so we can only host so many people uh, in our Zoom rooms and all those kind of things. So we do have limited capacity. So if you want to get your seat, I want you to go do it right now. And you can go over to sixfigurefounder.com slash grow. That's the number six. Then figurefounder.com slash grow. Pull out your phone right now. Pull it up. Go on your computer, your iPad, wherever. Pull that up. Just enter in your information. Mm -hmm. uh, Get registered there. There may be a short application because we do want to just make sure that we are bringing in the, the, the best people that are the best fit for this workshop. So this is a little bit more of an advanced workshop. Uh, it's if, you're want, if you already have a brand, you're wanting to grow. So go to that website, fill out the information. It's very short. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so much fun. It's always so much fun. And we get amazing feedback from people that attend. Uh, everyone, it's just good vibes all around. It's good energy. You're going to get a ton of value. You're all invited. We would love to meet you guys. And just doubling down on what Carrie said, it's almost Q4, guys. Like, this is going to be happening in Q4, the fourth quarter, i.e. the biggest shopping season of the entire year. So if you want to get some you know, knowledge, if you want to learn, we'll be talking about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the holiday season. We're going to be having these discussions because it's going to be coming up so soon. Yeah. And also, like Carrie said, this is the very last one of the year. We don't have a date for the next one in 2024, but we don't want you guys to have to wait. So we hope to see you guys all there. It's going to be a ton of fun and can't wait to meet a bunch of you there. So with that, why don't we transition into the main event here? We're going to be talking about all things AI. Now, whether you love it or you hate it, Here's the thing about AI. It's changing a lot of people's lives for the better. And I'm talking mostly about business owners. There are so many ways that it can save you time and money. And if you're not using it right now, that's fine. But I'm sure a lot of you are going to be using it in six months, 12 months, 18 months. 
because when you actually find something that does save you a bunch of time and money, you're probably going to spend more time learning it and getting better at it. And I've actually been super surprised and impressed and inspired by all the print on demand sellers that I've already seen using it, leveraging it for their business. Tons of our six figure founder members are already using it, especially for things like mock ups, for coming up with designs. Um, they're getting really freaking good at this stuff and they're dropping it. They're dropping designs and mock-ups and everything really, really quick. I'm talking like original mock-ups that you can't find anywhere else that just looks so good on their brand versus for example, a generic mock-up provided by a print on demand company. Yeah. So they're elevating their brands. They're elevating their designs and everyone listening, you can do this too. So I just want to talk uh, uh, for a minute about AI and then kind of give you the breakdown. So the breakdown, we're going to talk about this kind of in three phases, three steps. So we're going to talk about what is AI. We're just going to get through that really quick because most of you, unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard about AI. You probably have an idea what it is. Uh, then we're going to talk about the benefits of AI for t-shirt apparel businesses. And then we're going to share some really cool and interesting AI tools to help grow your brand. So when it comes to AI, in case you haven't noticed already or haven't heard already, AI is really changing the game for t-shirt apparel businesses and really businesses across the board. It's saving brands time, it's saving them money, and it's accelerating their growth. So with AI advancing so rapidly, it almost seems like every single tool now, you've got Shopify, Canva, Klaviyo, Kittle, uh, Creative Fabrica, they're all jumping on the AI bandwagon and they're rolling out AI features. But with so many features and tools being introduced all the time, it can be kind of overwhelming and it can be challenging to cut through the noise and know which to use and which to ignore because they're not all great, even though most of them are always getting better. So in this episode, we're going to be sharing some of our favorite AI tools or some of the tools that we're hearing about, we're seeing, we're seeing people use that are really, really cool. And we hope that you guys really enjoy it. So with that, why don't I just explain really, really briefly in one sentence what AI is? And then, <laughs> Carrie, you have a really fun stat yeah. uh, that I want you to share with the group. But um, so AI, artificial intelligence, is essentially just the science of making machines that can think like humans. That's it. That's what AI is. Which kind of sounds scary. Even better. just, it, even it just that, creepy. it kind of sounds scary. <laughs> it sounds creepy, right? It sounds creepy. But the, the benefit of it for us as business owners is that it's essentially in a lot of cases like having your own virtual assistant, you know, helping you save time, helping you turn tasks that used to take a long time, you know, consolidate those and make them take a fraction of the time. And most of all, help us grow our brand. So, Kerry, why don't you drop that fun fact on the group about AI? I want to drop that stat because it's probably the craziest one I've heard uh, recently. But I also want to say that, you know, I think you have to have you have to kind of have a healthy thinking about this, you know, and not it can be scary. There's a lot of scary things out there around AI and a lot of people talking about it in scary ways. Right. How it's going to take jobs and how it's going to take over humans and all these different things. And I think for me, it's important that I, that I try to keep a really healthy outlook on it and a healthy mindset mm -hmm. around it and control what I can control. And what I can only control is how it can help me in my business. And I think it's important to, to remember that when we say artificial intelligence is the science of making machines that can think like humans, we've had, we've had technology and the internet and computers for so long, and they've just been advancing. And this is the next advancement of computers and technology and all this kind of stuff. AI is essentially a computer, but we're training it to think like a human. And so it's able to do more things that uh, accomplish more tasks and jobs that we would normally do as humans. And so that's really interesting, but at its core, it's just technology, it's just software, it's just computers, right? Mm -hmm. It's not human. Um, so I think it's important to, to think about it that way. So I got to give a little bit of backstory on the stat. I'm on YouTube the other day. Uh, you know, I, I, I like, I don't even watch TV. I watch sports. I watch sports, but then other than that, I watch YouTube. <laughs> like, that's totally the same. It. Dude, that's it. so funny. Um, 100%. Yeah. 
And so I'm on YouTube the other day and a video pops up and it's this news, this, this like news uh, network that's interviewing an AI humanoid robot. And it's like, it's, it, it was, it was actually not as creepy as I thought it was oddly enough. Cause I like it made it the thumbnail and everything was like, it's going to be really creepy. Cause this like human robot thing is going to be like a human. And it was like this robot that you could like actually just have conversations with and everything. And it was right there, you know? And, uh, and I actually found that I thought the robot was kind of lame. I was like, this robot's kind of lame. But anyways, they had an AI expert there that they were interviewing, you know, and they were, they were cutting to it and they were asking questions. And they asked this expert, they were like, well, how smart is AI right now in 2023? And where do you see it going in the future? And this, this stat just absolutely blew my mind. This guy said that chat GPT-4, uh, which if you're not aware, chat GPT is kind of like, the backbone of most AI tools. It's kind of what's working underneath. It's the language model underneath all these AI tools. It's actually running most of the AI tools on our list today and like most of the ones that you'll see, ChatGPT is in the background. He said that ChatGPT4, the current version, already has an IQ of about 155, which is smarter than the average human. Mm. This is where it gets crazy. Mm. Einstein had an EQ of 160 or an IQ of 160. <laughs> Dang. So AI, AI is currently at 155 IQ. Einstein had an IQ of 160. Okay, so it's already almost as smart as Einstein. Dude, Dude imagine crazy. in one year from now. Imagine this guy just- said this guy said in 2 to 3 years time AI will be 3000 to 5000 times smarter than the average human. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> you can't even wrap your mind around that. No. I can't, I can't, what does that I, even look like? I know I have no idea what that looks like. And it's freaky. And he was he was kind of saying these things. He was like, you know, he was just saying how how even to this point, so chat GPT four, every time they put out a new version of chat GPT, it's about ten times smarter than the last version. So crazy. He was like, you can expect that conservatively, you know. In the next year, let's say it doubles, it, it, it doubles twice. It's 10 times more, and there's another version that's 10 times that. And, t- and so that's kind of what he was kind of saying. If you just do the math on every version being 10 times smarter than the last version, mm. that's where it gets crazy, where two to three years' time, chat GPT is going to be 3,000 to 5,000 times smarter than the average human, which is crazy. <sighs> that's so, insane. I think it really speaks to, and I've said this before about AI, but it really speaks to the fact that if you're not utilizing AI and if you're not leaning into it, I I think you have to. I don't think, I think in the next few years, like you're not going to have a choice. AI is going to be all around us. It already is to some extent, but it's going to be all around us in everything that we do because it's advancing so fast. And Mm -hmm. so you can't afford to just ignore it right now. You know what I mean? As a business owner, as a human, like you got to kind of embrace it. Totally, totally. And I I just want to say something about that, because I know change can be scary for a lot of people, you know, people that have been in print on demand for a long time. They've been they've been finding things that have been working. They've been having success with it. But, you know, change might seem scary, but it is also very good. It's evolution and the change. So if you did have to learn or if you chose, let's say you chose to like stick stick up with stay with the times and learn ai tools the whole point of them is to help you work more efficiently that's really what a lot of it comes down to and i'm like you carrie i like to focus on the good like there's always like a a a good and a bad side to everything and we can sit here people can sit here and be scared about like where ai is gonna go but Personally, that's personally out of my control totally. And I try not to worry about things that are out of my control. I try to worry about things that are in my control and I focus on the good. I'm like, okay, I don't know where AI is going. All I know is that right now there are tools out there that can save me time, save me money and help me grow my brand. So why don't I focus my energy on that? Why don't I focus my energy on like, leaning into this and learning what can actually help me grow and just focus on the good because there's so much good that does come with ai so you know i i know that there's kind of like you know we we talk about it how it's creepy how it's it's freaky we don't know where it's going but uh i would just strongly recommend that everyone focus on the good and know that 
when Carrie says, you know, you're going to have to learn these AI tools, like the whole point of them is to help you. So hopefully it significantly reduces <laughs> your work and helps well, you I just grow think, your brand. I think that, you know, if you think about two business owners and one and one is is embracing AI and one mm -hmm. is using it to their advantage mm -hmm. and the other one is like, I'm not even going to, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with it. Which one do you think is going to have the advantage? Which one do you think is going right. to make more more revenue? Which one do you think is going to reach more customers? Of course, it's going to be the person that's embracing technology. And I want you to think of it on this on this term as well. Think about business owner A if they didn't use computers, and right. business owner B that used computers. Right. Like, of course, there's a huge advantage because, yeah, like it, there's still businesses out there, these mom and pop businesses that don't use computers. Right. And it's like, mm -hmm. can you imagine the advantage you have by just embracing a little bit of technology? And that's kind of where we're at right now is we're on the forefront yeah. of like, you either are going to, you either are going to embrace AI or you're going to get left behind. Your business is going to probably not be successful or probably not be around for very long if you don't embrace it because it's just really taking over. As you mentioned, like even the, the software that we're using right now, like Shopify and Canva and all these places, mm -hmm. like AI is just taking over these softwares. And so mm -hmm. you just have to embrace it. You have to use it to your advantage. Yeah, the boat's leaving the harbor and you can be on it or you can get left behind. And you don't have to be on it right now. Like you don't, you know, lots of people having a ton of success without it right now. Yeah. But like even the tools that we're using every day are coming up with, you know, AI tools within them, like the Canvas and the Shopify's. And you're totally right about looking back at history, like look at computers, then look at the internet. Think about how that changed the game for businesses and the early adopters, how they benefited from that. Yeah. Then think about social media. Like there are so many brands, so many e-commerce, t-shirt and apparel brands that were built off the back of social media. Like I could list a ton just off the top of my head and a lot of them, they were early adopters and that's why they had a lot of success. So with that, why don't we talk about some of the benefits? We've kind of broken this down into four different parts, different benefits of AI. Um, and really there are four main categories right now um, that you can use AI for your e-commerce brand to help you grow and run your business more effectively, more efficiently. And that's the beauty of it. It's like adopting things that are actually going to help us. And, you know, a lot of times we don't want to go back to drawing board and learn something new, but if that small investment of time into learning something new is going to make us significantly more efficient in the long run, you're going to save a bunch of time and you're going to make your business much more competitive and you're going to grow your brand faster. So Carrie, did you want to kind of kick off these? Yeah. So basically the idea of this, you said it earlier, you said like, how do we cut through the noise of all the AI? Cause we just said like AI is everywhere already. It's in all mm -hmm. the tools. And so as I was, I was kind of, you know, putting together like the list of great tools. I, I realized that almost all the, AI softwares that we use right now can be bucketed into four main categories. And so that's how I came up with these four main categories and, and really relating these to how they can benefit your business. So category number one is AI art. Okay, so essentially we can use AI to generate art from scratch for apparel and print on demand products, but we can also generate art from scratch for our website, for mock-ups, advertising, and like pretty much anything you can think of. Mm -hmm. So essentially what AI art is, is the first category. There's a ton of software, but AI art is where you can type in text to image. You can just type in what you want. So you can just say, make a picture of a banana on a table and it will just, out of nothing, <laughs> will just show you a banana on a table. That was Best really seller example. right there. Yeah, best seller. But you can be like, <laughs> you can be like, uh, a, a furry cat with a cape flying through the sky, you know, eating a bird. And it's like, <laughs> like <laughs> it'll just show you that. It's crazy. But that's essentially what, that's the first bucket of like AI tools is art generation tools. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into some of those examples. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to take number two? You want me to keep going? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, number two is content creation tools. So AI can write just about any type of content for you. 
This could be blogs. This could be video scripts. This could be ad copy, like the verbiage that you use in your ads. This could be for emails. This could be social media posts, product descriptions, landing pages. The list just goes on and on and on. You could probably even have it write you a pretty good like about us story if you give it the right prompts. Yep. You know, like a really cool about us story about, I don't know, event like uh, I'm trying to think of like a niche off the top of my head, like cat lovers, you know, something like that. But there's so many people already using this for content creation. And this kind of goes back to how like once people start adopting this, it's actually gonna save them a lot oh, yeah. of time. And another thing that, you know, when you're not feeling very inspired or you're just having kind of writer's block or you don't know where to start when you're trying to think of content, AI is a great place to start mm -hmm. because what you can do is you can just write a prompt, type out what you want, have it spit something out, and then you can just edit that. And then that just kind of gets you start. It gets a hamster wheel spinning in your head and gets you feel more creative. I know that that's really helpful for me personally. Um, I really like using AI for content creation. Um, and I think a lot of other people are adopting it as well, like product descriptions and all sorts of stuff. So this is a big one. And this is like kind of the low hanging fruit, in my opinion, in Shopify. Now Shopify has AI that'll help you write, generate product descriptions. Um, Canva has mm -hmm. AI that'll help you generate product descriptions. There's, there's, there's already so much features and functionality out there, um, that can save you a lot of time. Well, one thing that I, it's not included in there actually, which falls under this bucket as well, is is video editing, right? Like video mm. editing, clipping, cutting, um, those kind of things. So when you have existing content, AI can help you then distribute that content in so many ways. Like one of the great things we talked about blogs on here um, or even social media posts, you could tell AI, you could give AI a video and AI could turn that into a blog post for you that you could mm. just copy and then paste into a blog, right? So like it's almost endless the way that you could use this for content creation. Mm -hmm. But I think it goes without saying that if you have an online business in today's world, almost every type of business has to create content in some way to be able to drive traffic and, you know, run the business. Even if that doesn't mean you have to have a YouTube channel or anything like that. It's like, mm -hmm. you just, you have to create some kind of content, social media yeah. or video content, or we're doing a podcast right now or blogs mm -hmm. or, I mean, it's, so AI can can assist you in in doing all these kind of things with uh, through your content creation. Yeah, and and just to kind of say one more thing about that, like just to kind of give a, a, an actual example, let's, let's just talk about blogging for a sec. Blogging is great for SEO. It's great for putting out content, uh, you know, for getting your brand out there. And back in the day. <laughs> i.e. last year, <laughs> a lot of us were just writing blogs from scratch. Hey, like, Adrian, you, re <laughs> you remember we used to write blogs? Like, <laughs> like last year, I would spend hours <laughs> writing a blog article that wasn't even like that long. And either you kind of had two options. You either wrote it yourself or you outsourced it. You hired someone, you hired a company, you hired a freelancer to write the blog article for you. So it either took you a lot of time or it cost you money. And now with something like ChatGPT, if you want to throw like, let's say a value blog out uh, to your ideal target audience, you can use ChatGPT to get a lot of the information from that blog. Uh, it can pretty much spit out the entire thing for you. And then you just, we always recommend going through it to make sure everything seems accurate and you can make tweaks and like reference anything if you want, but it, it'll do like 90 plus percent of the work for you. And that's just one way that you're saving time and money by leveraging in a lot of cases, free tools. Uh, it's just so Pretty funny. Cool. Cause I'm, I'm like, I'm like, it's going to be like one year from now. We're going to be like, bro, do you remember when we used to actually record podcasts? Now it just like, <laughs> it just like makes the video. And it looks perfect. <laughs> 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 like, I, I really hope I really hope that doesn't happen that we don't have to yeah, do, no. we're just like hey just make a new podcast episode on this and it's like generates the video and it looks perfect right <laughs> right no we, we oh, love no. podcasting man this no. is super fun I know I, I know. Yeah. it's just funny it's just funny remember totally. we used to write yeah. blogs by hand <laughs> yeah. um, all right the number three bucket here uh, of of ways you can you use AI is customer support. This is one that I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. 
there's some amazing use cases for this, but I think this is one that's probably still a little bit underutilized. You see some of the big brands starting to use it, but we're not quite there yet in the smaller brand world. But AI can now handle many common customer support issues. Um, it can suggest products and become a shopping assistant. Um, it can help reduce refunds, and it can also improve the customer experience on your store. So like specifically to the shopping assistant, I think is really cool. There's a lot of Shopify apps. I've got one on the list we're going to talk about that will actually, you can, they can come up with these quizzes and have your customer take a quiz and it can recommend products based off of how they answer those questions, That's which cool. is, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and some of these apps claim that, you know, they, they are very like human like, so they'll chat with your customers and it will feel like a real human and they can help reduce some of your refunds and different things like that through different things that they do. But it's, it's pretty crazy. I think we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. But um, customer support is something that we're going to continue to see more AI software come out and more use cases for customer support. And when it's good and when, when they have a really, really good product that is makes sense for small to medium-sized t-shirt apparel business owners, which is you know a lot of our listeners, it's going to be a game changer. Like I can't wait for it to get to a point where it can take a lot of that burden of customer support off our shoulders or off our team's shoulders. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we have a VA that does our customer support. We have VA for social media moderation, but to be able to help take some of that off their shoulders would be amazing. I think it's going to be huge like when when i think about customer support usually anytime i'm growing a business that's one of the first things the i outsource thing, yeah. if not the very very first thing i outsource because it's not generally revenue generating yes you want the customer to have a good experience yes you want to make sure they get you you help them deal with their issues or or someone helps them deal with their issues but your time as a ceo of your business is better spent on product creation marketing creating content. There's so many other places where your time is a lot more valuable than that. So I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't seen many, you know, small print on demand businesses yeah. leveraging anything yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple of years, there's kind of a go-to tool or a couple of go-to tools that are really helping us out. Well, the, and, one, and one of the ones I have on this list, I don't want to spoil it too much, but like, I haven't used it personally, but I was reading their, I'm going to have to pull it back up, but I was reading their like Shopify app store, uh, um, you know, listing there. Yeah. And, like one of the things it was saying, and we'll talk about it later, but one of the things it was saying was like, basically with this tool, you install it into your Shopify store and it's going to basically like learn your Shopify store and read all mm -hmm. the data. And that's mm -hmm. how it comes up with some of these things. And I'm just thinking, like, I'm just imagining a world where, like, as you mentioned, like your your brand is growing and you need to hire some customer support and you're able to, you know, use an AI tool and that AI tool can literally just learn your business through technology and you yeah. know, through AI. And then it can basically have those conversations with your customers and responding mm -hmm. to emails and responding to chat inquiries to support and like... I, I, I'm I'm guessing that this is probably we're probably already beginning to see the beginning of this, but like when AI can process a refund for you, like there's mm -hmm. no there's no reason why AI couldn't handle an exchange or a refund and actually mm -hmm. generate a shipping label and send it to the customer and like all the like that could definitely be automated. I could definitely see a world where AI could 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 do all that for you, right? And yeah. like. Like even with print on demand, where AI could automatically notify your print on demand provider that there was a bad quality print or something, and then could could prompt the POD provider to send out a replacement. You know, like yeah. I think that's definitely something that's a use case that we could see very quickly, maybe in the next year to two years or earlier. Right. And with customer support, like most of the time, it's like 10 questions that everyone's asking. Like, exactly. th that's why we always recommend creating an FAQ page on your website, because as soon as you start dealing with customer support, you're going to realize that the high majority of uh, inquiries are all around, like just a couple main questions, yeah. like, where's my order? That's probably yeah. like the number one question yep. that you're going to get. And to be able to have like AI saying, hey, what? no problem, happy to help you. What's your, what was your order number? And then they just like input their order number and then it goes into Shopify and says, 
it looks at the tracking information. It says, here's a link to your tracking details or here's a link to your tracking information. Boom, question asked. And other basic questions like that, that most of the time, those are the questions that you're getting that like top 10 questions. Yeah. I feel like that could just be like having like multiple team members and yeah. you know not having to rely on someone to uh, respond to them within 24 hours to be able to have in real time. You know, right now it's really hard for us as business owners to have that chat widget um, it, and be able to respond right away. So a lot of people on their website, you know, you'll have a chat widget. It's great for social proof and you don't actually need to respond right away. There are ways that you can set up and say, oh, we got your message, we'll email you. But I'm just saying to have a live, like real time chat widget, that would be really cool for the customer. There's a lot of value in that. And right now it's just hard for us as sellers to be able to afford people being on there 24 seven manning this if it's not ourselves, right? Yeah. But to have AI doing this to answer all the top questions and then maybe the one-off questions that are totally different and unique, we can just say, oh, you know, we'll just need a little bit more time to look into this. We'll send you an email. We'll follow up with an email. Yeah. Like, I just feel like it could be a game changer. And some of those things I think are already out there, but I think making it readily available in my research, you know, I was searching the Shopify app store, really looking through some of these AI. If you go in the app store and you search and you put in AI, it actually has a section that's called AI powered apps. Mm. And it's really cool. Like learning about some of these, I would actually encourage our, our users or um, our users, our <laughs> listeners, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> our listeners, I'd encourage our listeners to go, if you go into the Shopify app store, apps.shopify.com, and you just put in AI, it says, it's actually called a guide. And you click on it and it pulls up this web page that takes you through some of the different ways you can use AI and it actually recommends some of the top AI tools in the Shopify app store. There's probably already hundreds of them. Um, but it's really cool, like looking through here, I think the customer support area is one of those places where it's not quite to the level I think it could be yet, but there is some really cool tools to check out there for sure. Right. Yep. Number four. Cool. Number four, processing and analyzing data. So AI can process sales, refund, refunds, and customer data for you as the business owner to help you make informed decisions about your business. See trending sales data, what products are working, what products aren't working, what your customers look like and exactly what they're buying. This data can get really deep and very specific and it can be very, very useful for your business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, kind of there's a little bit of overlap here it seems like with like customer support you know sales refunds that kind of thing well that's but, not it's so not necessarily processing like refunds and those kind of things i'm more mm -hmm. giving you the data on the on the back end as the as the business owner oh like, uh, like that's like an analytics report yeah analytics yeah. would be it would be a great great term for it yeah. um there's actually, I reviewed an app a, a while back that was probably about a year ago, and I'm trying to remember the exact app, uh, but it was pretty wild in this category. So what I mean by this processing and analyzing data, there's actually a lot of AI apps that are already out that do things like this, but what they do is they give you really, really deep reports on your sales data and mm. different trends. So like, let me, let me give you an example. Some of these AI uh, softwares can actually show you, uh, let's say like what age, age demographics are buying certain products and what time of the day they're buying them and what days of the week they're buying them and what platforms they're buying them on mm. and where they're located in the world. And like it's piecing together all this data to give you these insights that you could never get before. And right. it's, it's pretty crazy and it gets so detailed where it can also tell you what size is selling to younger people like, in this area. And it's like, you can go in and you can actually customize these reports, however you like them and however deep you want to get with this data. And it can be very, very insightful, um, to learn some of that stuff. You can, you can go in there and you might see, man, this one design in the color blue in size medium, everybody's returning this. Why are, mm. I, I've been getting all these refunds, but I didn't realize that like, it was this one design in blue in size medium. And for some reason it's only 
45 year olds returning that like it's, it's like random but like <laughs> you can dig that deep where then you can make educated decisions on how to grow your business right right and man the things that ai can process through the technology and show you can just be super insightful and deep uh in your business that Hope reminds that me sense. of yeah no that that does make sense and that reminds me of a really cool feature that came out shopify started beta testing this i want to say like in the last one to two years and you probably have seen this too carrie where you'll get this on the main shopify dashboard it'll say customers who purchase this item yeah. were 50 percent more likely to also purchase this item think about how that just that one stat can help you make biz, better business decisions if you are creating upsells or upsell funnels um, you can use that information to put products in front of people that they're significantly more likely to buy. And um, I just thought that one, like that one analytical loan was just so, so powerful. I loved seeing that. Um, and I remember reaching out to Shopify and be like, where's, where do I find more like this? And they were, they said that they were just testing it and that they were just kind of sharing one off, but they didn't have like a full report or anything, but that yeah. might've, that they might now, I'm not actually too sure. But I remember when that, that first came out, I was super excited because I was like, oh man, this is such a, such great analytics that we can make better business decisions from. Yeah, there's some there's some pretty crazy apps and 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 again with the customer in relation to the customer support category, it's can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're a smaller seller. It's like mm. trying to think of this, but if you're doing any kind of like meaningful meaningful um, revenue, you know, if you're doing 15, 20k, 30k plus per month, like mm. these insights can be extremely helpful, you know, from some of totally. these AI tools. So. Anyways, uh, Adrian, I want to get into cool part three, cool and interesting AI tools to grow your brand. So I want to, yes. I want to talk about some specific, um, software, some specific tools, some that we use day in, day mm -hmm. out. And some that I just want to add to this list because I think they'll be helpful to people. Um, so I think probably the, what I, what I'd like to do is I, I don't mind going through these and then just kind of, I want to get your thoughts. I'll go sure. through each one and then kind of get your thoughts on, on these different tools and, and what you think about them. Totally. So that sounds great. The first tool uh, is probably the number one tool on everybody's list. Maybe not. Maybe, I mean, it's, it's between this one and Chat GPT, which definitely is also up on the there. list. Yeah. But it's definitely up there. Uh, and it's called Mid Journey. I think a lot of people know about what Mid Journey is, but if you don't know what Mid Journey is, it is probably. I wouldn't even say probably it is the number one text to image, like AI art generator tool. Mm -hmm. um, you can do so many things with mid journey. I think it's probably the most advanced uh, text to image tool. Um, mm -hmm. You can generate art for your products. So print on demand products, t-shirts, I mean, and anything else, you know, I recently did an episode with Kate Hayes. We talked about digital products. Mm -hmm. Mid journey is great for generating digital product stuff like seamless mm -hmm. patterns, which is something that uh, my brother does, which is crazy. These digital patterns, you can create lifestyle mockups. That's mm -hmm. something you mentioned that our students do inside Six Figure Founder. Many yeah. of our students are starting to generate these images of actual people. Now they're not real people, they're, but they look like real they people. They look real. They like, look so real, it's yeah. mind blowing. Yeah. And what, what they're doing is they're telling Mid Journey like, show me a, you know, 55 year old male with these features directly looking at the camera, wearing a white t-shirt with mm -hmm. the background of a pickleball court or whatever, you know, and it generates that image for them and it looks so real. And then what they do is they just overlay their design on the t-shirt. And now mm -hmm. they have a unique lifestyle mock-up that nobody else has. Exactly. You can't get it. You can't get it from place it. You can't get it from, you know, any of these. Other like you can't get it anywhere. It's mind blowing. Right? Yeah. So create lifestyle mock-ups. You can create ad images uh, inside mid journey. And you know, this mid journey does, I believe have a free version, but really to get going with it, you want to start, it starts at about 10 bucks a month. Mm. What are your thoughts on all this with mid journey? Like it's pretty wild. So first of all, you have totally sold me on the value of mid journey, like long time ago, a long time ago, yeah. you were, you were getting into mid journey, like, at, at like either very, very early this year, I want to say like end of last year, you were, you were kind of getting into getting your feet wet with it. And yeah. 
it just blew my mind. Like I, I learned about mid journey from you and I saw what you were doing and you put on that amazing masterclass for our six figure founder members where you showed them example. Like, let me show you an example like of using mid journey right now. You did a live example. It was incredible. And I would say that of all the tools here, this is probably the number of all the tools that we're going to list. This is probably the number one tool that our six figure founder members are using. Um, yeah. I think it's so powerful. It can save you so much time. I mean, like one thing I will say is one of the things I love about print on a man and just selling t-shirt apparel, uh, you know, t-shirt apparel is a lot of my best sellers ever have just been literally a slogan or just like a really simple slogan with a little graphic on it. And a lot of other people, the exact same thing because they evoke emotion and reliability. And a lot of people have the same, they say the same thing as their best sellers. Most are really, really simple, if not fully text-based, but even for that, you can still use this. So one, you could use it to create unique original designs that would be really tough to do if you don't know how to do Photoshop, or if you're not hiring like a professional graphic designer to do it, um, so you can create designs using this, but then the mockups too, you can create, even if you are just using all text-based designs, you can create original mockups for your brand that look like your ideal target audience, your ideal customer. And we've talked about that a lot. It's very important when you are branding like on your website, on social media, that the mockups that you're using actually look like the customer that you're trying to target. You want them to see that person on that on social media, for example, see them wearing that shirt and be like, wow, that looks like me. I can imagine myself mm -hmm. in that shirt. That person looks like one of my friends, you know, and this is going to make it more likely that those people are going to convert because it's relatable. It's very relatable. So yeah, I would say that I'm glad you list this as number one, because this is if I had to recommend any AI tool right now for someone, if they're like, I only want to learn one AI tool, that's yeah. it. I just want to do, I just want to start out with a one AI tool. Yeah. I'd say learn mid journey. Yeah. Mid journey is just wild, man. It's it, 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 if you haven't experienced it, like just go to midjourney.com and look at the community showcase. Cause the artwork just will it's blow insane. your mind. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Um, yeah. the one downside I think of mid journey it for some people is that mid journey does not actually have their own like software they actually it actually operates in discord so yeah that can be a little bit kind confusing for for some people is yeah. you know you have to have a mid journey account but then you also have a discord account you add mid journey to your discord and then you have to like operate in the discord and there's like thousands and thousands of other people in there and it's kind of this weird thing that's the only thing if you can get past all that it's incredible but that kind of brings me to number two, which is very similar to mid journey and it's called Leonardo. And so Leonardo is another text to image generator. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this one because it's very similar to mid journey. Uh, mm -hmm. but what it is, it's a great alternative to mid journey with some interesting features. Many people find Leonardo a little bit easier to use because Leonardo does not operate in discord. So mm -hmm. it's very similar to mid journey text to image. But if you, it's kind of hard to explain, but if you actually go play with Leonardo, you'll kind of see that it's, it's similar, but different. It's mm -hmm. the artwork is not the same style necessarily. Like it's a little different. It gives you a little different vibe. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just easy. We found it easier for some of our members to use, uh, because it doesn't, as I mentioned, it doesn't work in discord. It actually just works on their website, uh, which is great. It's just like a web-based software. And, um, it does a lot of things. Uh, I believe it's, I don't have the pricing in front of you, but I believe it's also a little bit cheaper than mid journey. You get credits when you sign up and those credits are like, you get free credits that reset from time to time. And mm. so you, this is one, um, Leonardo is one that you could actually use for free depending on how much artwork you're, you're generating. Um, it's a really cool tool. And I learned about it from Juna from detour shirts who we yeah. had on the podcast. I don't have the episode handy, but a few few episodes ago. Um, and uh, I would definitely recommend that you go try it out. Even if you are using Mid Journey, even if you like it, like there's no reason not to go try out Leonardo. It's it's really, really cool. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, 
I also remember hearing about it from Juna yeah. and I was like, oh, I really don't know much about it. And then I actually heard some six figure founder members talking about it. And yeah, it's um, very cool. they were saying that they're using it over mid journey. So mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Like, it's so weird that mid journey is on a discord. Like why? Like it, it's such a popular tool. There are so many people using it. Like guys, get your own website and like make this as easy as possible for people to use. You know what I mean? It's almost like they, they create like this unnecessary friction and it, it does make it confusing. You're right. Like the tool is super powerful and it's awesome to see what our six figure founder members, what we've been able to do with it, you know, but it's just, I just wish they would, like you think by now they would have a website and they would make it really, really easy. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So get, definitely go check out Leonardo. Uh, number three on the list is the big one that we've, we've already mentioned about a hundred times in this. It's yeah. chat GPT. Um, chat GPT is, it, it's, it's a few different things, but essentially using chat GPT directly, it's a free AI chat bot. There is a paid version, but it is, you can do pretty much everything in the free version. It just apparently generates a little bit slower than the paid version but it can do many, many things. So essentially what it is, is you just talk to ChatGPT. You can just ask it questions. The big mm -hmm. things you can use ChatGPT for, generating ideas for like mm -hmm. anything. You can say, help me come up with a business idea and you can tell it what you want, you know, some things about your, what you want the business to be and it will help you do that. You can do research on it, you can, um, you can generate ideas for t-shirt designs and for product designs, mm -hmm. for slogans. I mean, anything and everything. You can also write ads with it. You can ask it to write ads for you. You can ask it to write emails for you. You can ask it to write ad copy or any kind of copy for your landing pages, for your website, your, as you mentioned, your about us. You could probably have yeah. it generate an about us. Um, you can, you can uh, write product descriptions. You can come up with titles for products or videos or anything like Anything basically text-based, you can ask it and, and it will do for you. You can also feed it information and say, can you clean this up for me? Can you clean mm -hmm. up the punctuation? Can, can you, you summarize make, it? Can, can you make you it shorter? It? Yeah. Can you make it sound better? Like if you don't, mm -hmm. if you don't, if you're not a good writer and you're like, I just need this, this thing I wrote to sound better, you can re have it rephrase it or make it sound better. It's almost endless. And I know that they're also they're also starting to implement more things in chat GPT where you can actually upload images and different things and do some different things with those, which we won't we'll probably not, won't get into too much in this podcast episode. But mm -hmm. in addition to that, and I want to hear your thoughts on all that, Adrian, but in addition to that, for people that don't know, chat GPT is the language model that most of the softwares on this list are using. So if you have an AI software, Mm -hmm. Most likely in the background, in the code and all that kind of stuff. I don't know all the ins and outs, but it's using chat GPT as kind of the base for its knowledge, where it's getting all the information and knowledge from. Yeah. So that's kind of just something to know about chat GPT. Your thoughts on all this, Adrian? So yeah. Wild. Yeah, no, it is wild. And, and first, just to circle back, the episode with Juna Duncan, that's episode 24. That's where he talks about Leonardo and gives his take because that was one of the tools that he actually recommended when we said, you know, you're a graphic designer, you design all day. What what tools are you using? And Leonardo is one of his favorite. So, but in terms of ChatGPT, so this is the one that I personally use the most. I feel like you can, <laughs> could it, I keep finding new ways to use it. Yep. And that's what I love about it. It's just like, it's so like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. You can just put any prompt you want in there. Like think about going back to the blog example. Think about if you did want to create a lot of content for your brand and you were writing a blog every month for the time that it took you to write that one blog, you could write like 30 blogs, you know, using something like ChatGPT and think about how much more like exposure you're getting 30 pieces of content on the internet versus one on a subject that hopefully brings people back to your brand. But I just feel like it's so, this is where I feel like everything exploded. So ChatGPT launched in like November or December of last year. And that's where really what kicked off everything. And um, this is if someone wanted to just play around with any AI tool, this would be the one I would probably tell them to go to first. 
It's free. You can start off really simple, just ask it questions and get answers. Yep. And then you start getting better because you're like, oh, this is really good. And you know, then you can start changing the prompts. Like you say, hey, write in a write an about us, about uh, uh, you know, a, a dog a brand in the dog niche. Write a write a funny about us about a brand in the dog niche. And then it writes something out. And you can say, make it more casual. And then you can say, cut it in half, make it only, you know, one paragraph and you can just keep prompting it. And all of a sudden you're shaping this amazing piece of content mm -hmm. that you didn't have to take that much time to create. So I'm awesome. a huge fan of chat GPT. It's like Google on steroids, but so much, so much more capable. And so for when it comes to imagery and mockups and stuff, mid journey is my top pick, my absolute favorite. Carrie introduced me to it and I'm, yeah. I, I love it. Um, and then for just general leveraging AI, ChatGPT is my personal favorite. Yeah. And so the next one on the list is, uh, and actually I wanted, I meant to, before we started the list, I wanted to give this disclaimer that there are a lot of different softwares in these categories that do the same thing. So just so mm -hmm. everyone's aware, like we're giving you some of the examples of some of the really great AI tools out there. But like everything on this list, pretty much, with the exception of like ChatGPT, there's like 40 other softwares that do the exact same thing, and they're yes. more popping up every day. So I would encourage you guys to go like do some research. If you hear an idea on this list that you're like, oh my gosh, that sounds like something I could use, you might want to do your research and find, you know, some of the different tools that do it. So the next one on the list is called Jasper. And this is probably the most popular content writing assistant. So it will write content for you. Mm -hmm. This software uh, will be more tailored to writing engaging human-like content than simply using ChatGPT. So here's what's interesting about ChatGPT and this whole AI revolution is, this is one thing that's interesting, is what we're seeing now and what we're going to continue to see is these more niche-focused softwares that are using ChatGPT, but then focusing them around a certain niche or use case. So mm -hmm. for instance, let's say that you wanted to start a new business and you were gonna create an AI tool for doctors, right? That maybe it analyzed you know, health data to help doctors make better decisions about their patients. That tool would probably be using ChatGPT on the, you know, on the back end but it would be tailor-made for doctors, right? It right. would be the software that's niche focused for doctors for that use case. This is essentially what Jasper is, is Jasper is using ChatGPT. It, it, it actually, it does use ChatGPT, but the software is more tailored for writing content, writing really, really good content, blogs, landing pages, ads, social media posts, right? So you, Jasper is a paid tool, and there's sometimes when you're using ChatGPT, and you might ask it to write something for you and you're like, ah, that's not really what I'm looking for. And then you might say, make it shorter or make it sound more casual or whatever, you know, kind of the, some of the examples you're using, mm -hmm. you can't quite get what you want, right? Mm -hmm. Jasper is one of these tools that will be more, uh, will be more helpful for this certain task of writing, uh, of writing content, right? It's gonna be mm -hmm. way better at writing content than just using ChatGPT. And so for that specific use case, it's really, really good. It's gonna sound more human, it's gonna sound more natural. And so Jasper is a really popular tool because of how good it is for writing ads and emails and content and blogs and all that kind of stuff. So any thoughts on that? Um, so I don't know, yeah, I don't know much about Jasper. I haven't used it myself. It sounds really cool. It also sounds a lot like copy.ai, like you yeah, same which thing. is same another thing. AI tool. <laughs> all about copywriting, yep. um, which I've, I've heard about quite a bit. So yeah, it's so interesting how ChatGPT came out. And then like you said, it's almost like people created, people like niche down, they created these softwares that were a niche down version, but still using the same, you know, central system, yep. i.e. ChatGPT. But isn't that funny how people were, you know, ChatGPT comes out and then all of a sudden like, the market explodes with other tools like this, which is essentially chat GPT, but it's just more niche down. <laughs> it's not any different than like, you know, you, you could open an ad agency and you could just mm -hmm. run ads for all the different kinds of businesses. Yeah. But you're probably going to have more, same thing with apparel businesses, but you're probably gonna have more success 
starting an ad agency for chiropractors and then an ad exactly. agency for doctors and an ad agency for whatever. It's the same thing with apparel businesses, right? We always talk yeah. about it as like, should you start a general store or a niche store? It's mm -hmm. like, we know proven through years of, of working with students and doing it ourselves. Like if you niche down to one type of customer, you're going to have quicker success and it's going to yes. probably be more successful because it's specialized. Well, yeah. people are smart and they're doing the same thing with chat GPT and they're using that as the base, but then making these niche focused tools that are way better than just using chat GPT because mm -hmm. chat GPT is so general, right? Like mm -hmm. everybody can use it for a million different things. Mm -hmm. So why not create these softwares that are more focused and provide more features and are more tailor made for these different types of people and business owners and different things. So that's essentially what Jasper copy.ai is. And uh, yeah, cool. it's very clever. And that's kind of what I was getting at. It aligns with our strategy for t-shirt apparel businesses of like niche down. That's what we say. The first thing you choose niche down. So it's just interesting. There's, yeah. it's kind of aligned there. Yep. Um, the next one on the list number, this is number five is called get munch, get munch. It's an AI video editor that can basically identify trends and viral spots in your content, and it will click out, clip out videos into bite-sized pieces of content, think reels, TikToks, and mm -hmm. it can also add subtitles, it can add styling to the videos, and much more. So I know this, Adrian, this is a, a tool that you've used a little bit. Yep. Um, th again, disclaimer, there's a ton of these softwares out there. Yes. So this isn't necessarily our favorite one, but it is right. one example of this type of software. What's been your experience or thoughts on it? So I've been using GetMunch um, on the coaching side for Ecom Legends Academy. Um, and I've been using it to take long form content and to convert it into a bunch of little short term, co short form content pieces. And if you go on my Instagram, you'll actually see, even, I think my TikTok too, I posted a couple. There's a couple that I posted where I have uh, big captions and they're yellow and they're colorful and that's all from get munch so essentially what i did was i just took a because we record this um podcast and we put it on youtube carrie puts it on his youtube channel i put it on my youtube channel and what i did is i just took the link to that youtube and i just put it into get munch and then it munched out uh like 10 <laughs> or 20 pieces of the short form content for me and it was pretty good. Like it's far from perfect, far mm -hmm. from perfect. And there are, you know, it did require me to go in and make some manual changes, but I feel like a lot of AI is like that right now. Yeah. It gets you maybe 80% of the way. And then you go in there and you tweak things. You, you, you chop up the clips a little bit more. You, you know, you change the colors of the subtitles. So it did end up saving me a lot of time from having to go into some editing software and then find the clips, um, it found them for me. Uh, I wouldn't say it was perfect. Uh, it still needs some work, but I expect it's gonna be a lot better in like six months, maybe two months from now. Uh, so, and I'm trying to think for t-shirt and apparel business owners, if you were like a content creator, or if you were someone with a big audience, let's say that you know, a lot of uh, people in print on demand, they actually build their audience first, and then they, they they use print on demand to monetize their audience. It's something you're seeing a lot, like a lot of YouTube, you know, people that are creating long form content on YouTube, they have like a merch store and they're using print on demand, stuff like that, right? For those people, this could be really, really helpful and really, really cool and saving them a lot of time and allow them to take that long form piece of content and then turn it into a bunch of short form pieces for whichever platform they're primarily posting on. So it, it can definitely save you time. It's not perfect. It's got, it's still got some, you know, some yeah. work it's got to do, but it does definitely save me time from versus me having to do it alone. And, and just, just applying it back to, you know, um, these types of tools, there's a lot of different ones out there. Mm -hmm. There are starting to become up AI video editing, right? So like, yeah. if you're creating content for your brand, you know, a lot of times now you can just pop in the, the, fi the unedited file and it will edit it for you. I don't know how perfect it's going to be. One, you know, one, I, one, I heard about the other day, um, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember what it was, but. Uh, it would do, it was for podcasts. And so like, if we recorded mm. a podcast like this, like you could pop it in there and it would edit your podcast and like 
Some of them, you know, will remove dead space for mm -hmm. you, which is mm -hmm. like, if you've ever edited video of like somebody talking, it's like the most tedious thing just to remove all the dead space of like, oh, I have to think and I have to re-say the totally. line and like, you know, stuff like that. So there's endless things you can do on the video side, editing mm -hmm. side right now. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, yep. The next couple on this list are very simple tools. I think we can kind of ra rifle through these. Number six, I'm very excited about this one. I just did a video on it recently. It's called Vexels Quote Generator. So if you, um, if you haven't heard of Vexels, Vexels is this amazing suite of tools, V-E-X-E-L-S, all kinds of different things, mock-ups, um, uh, like elements, Designs. elements, a designer. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, they're starting to implement AI and they have this really simple tool called Vexels Quote Generator. It's maybe the simplest thing on this entire list. You literally just tell it your niche and it will generate endless quote ideas for your designs. It is, it is literally for t-shirt and apparel sellers, and they are really good, Adrian. They're, these quotes are really good. And again, it's using chat GPT, but it's made an AI tool for t-shirt and apparel sellers. That's awesome. And it's, so it, it weeds yeah. out all the noise, and it's just simple, and it works so good. You can be like, you can just go in there and be like dolphins, and it'll it'll pop out like ten quotes that you could put make dolphin shirts, and then you could be like, give me ten more, and it'll just keep doing more. Another thing I found that you can do on here, which I thought was awesome, is you can combine niches. So you could just that put like awesome. dolphins and you know cats, and it'll literally give you quotes. <laughs> it'll literally give you quotes for t-shirts about That's dolphins very niche, and Carrie. cats. That's yeah, very know, that niche. Weird. But for real, it's like, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's pretty dang useful. Like, I think it's, yeah, I thought it was awesome. I thought yeah, it was awesome. no, we were playing around with this. I, I, when was it? Like a while back, you and I were playing around with Vexels. I think it was after talking to Juna, actually, because I think he was saying he liked Vexels. Yeah. And we were like playing around with it. And we were like, man, this has so many cool features. It's like, it's made for us, it's made for it's our made for listeners, us. which is so cool because. Most AI isn't specifically for t-shirt and apparel brands, but this one, you've got the design maker, you've got the mock-up maker, you've got like a logo maker. It really mm -hmm. does have a lot of the, the, you know, the aspects that we're using on a very regular basis. So I'm, I'm a fan of Vexels for sure. Number seven on the list, uh, also very, very simple. And again, there are many, many of these tools out there. This is just one that I like to use. It's called vectorizer.ai, V-E-C-T-O-R-I-Z-E-R.ai. -E it's a free AI software to increase the size and quality of your images and, and or turn them into vectors. This mm. is pretty, it's pretty crazy. So like, incredible. I remember a time, which I'm sure you remember as well. If you had a low quality piece of art, like on your computer, it's like kind of useless. Like right. yep. you can't really do much with it, right? So yeah. what's happening with AI, number one, is now you can feed these low quality images or small images into these AI tools and they'll they'll like recreate the image in a really big form. So like it's, they're not stretching the image, they're actually just recreating the image through AI and giving you a big version of it. So that's one mm -hmm. way to use it. But the, 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 one of the things that's really cool about this vectorizer.ai tool, which is actually completely free right now, I, I'm sure that they're going to charge for it at some point, but it's still free, is it will turn any image into a vector. Like it will separate, Amazing. It will separate the, the, the parts of the image and you can literally like load it into Illustrator or whatever. You could stretch it endlessly. Like it's, it's like pretty mind blowing and it does such a good job. Like so one of the ways I've been using it and what I taught in our AI class recently was, you know, going into mid journey, creating some art there. Well, then mid journey is going to give you a relatively mid, mid kind of quality image and you need to use, you, I throw it into vectorizer and then vectorizer turns it into a, a, like an SVG vector file. Mm -hmm. And then I can take that into Photoshop or I can take that into Canva or whatever. And I have this really high quality image uh or recreation of the of the of the art and it's so good it's so good um yeah and there's a million other like image enlargers ai image enlargers but it's just really really cool 
Yeah, I love this tool. Another tool that you introduced me to, and I absolutely love this tool for that reason. Um, so for anyone that doesn't understand, you know, about, about vectors and whatnot, essentially by turning it into a vector file, you can adjust the size, you can expand your design without loss of quality, which is huge because a lot of times we'll create, someone will create a design in um, let's say Canva, and then they'll upload it into their print on demand provider and it'll be really low quality and it'll come out very pixelated if they actually have that printed. Yeah. But with this, and a lot of times uh, what we'll do is, I think a lot of people make this mistake because I know I've made this mistake where you put your design into the print on demand mockup and then you expand the design on the mockup. And as you're expanding it, it's actually losing quality and it's gonna get lower quality and, and more potentially more blurry and or pixelated. Mm -hmm. But that's the beauty of vectors is they don't lose any of the resolution as you stretch them. So they can be really big, really small. You can use them all the time and you don't have to keep coming up with different file, the same you know image. You don't have to download it in a bunch of different file sizes, a bunch of different dimensions. It's like you can use one. So I totally, I think this is such an awesome tool. It's long overdue and I'm just so glad that something like it exists. Number eight on the list, I'm kind of embarrassed to say that I haven't used this one yet because this one is one of the more mind-blowing tools that I've seen. Uh, number eight is called Adobe Photoshop Generative Generative Fill. Generative Fill. So basically what this is, I've seen YouTube videos and like clips of it and I just haven't done it myself, which I just need to go do it. You can like circle anything or highlight anything in a Photoshop file inside Adobe Photoshop and you can just change it to whatever you want. Like you just enter in what you want and Photoshop will switch it out. So like I've seen people like they have like a, a, a an image of like a dude like with mountains in the background and mm -hmm. they'll just like erase the mountains and say like put a volcano and it just like puts a volcano and then That's they'll be like awesome. put more stars in the sky and it'll like put more stars in there and it'll say like, you know, put an airplane in the sky. There's an airplane. Make it daytime instead of nighttime. Like it's it's like change the guy's shirt. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> like, but here's the thing about it is the next one on this list is we're going to, I'm going to spoil it. We're going to talk about Canva. Canva has some of these features in there, but like the Photoshop one is mind blowing. It's so good. Like, have you seen any of this in Photoshop? No, I have not oh, used my goodness. this and I'm on the website right now looking at it and I'm like, Whoa, Dude, like, like you just of, need to go watch a YouTube video of somebody using right. it because it'll blow your mind. Of course, Adobe, right? Like Adobe creates amazing products, Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom, so many products that or so many. Yeah, so many software products that a lot of us use. And so I'm not surprised that they came out with a game changing tool at all. They're such a cool company, uh, but this is pretty wild. Quickly yeah, like create, add to, remove, or replace images right in Adobe Photoshop with simple text prompts powered by Adobe Firefly Generative AI. Yeah, and I mean, I'm pretty sure you can do like some lighting stuff and shadows and like it's it's next level from like any mm -hmm. of this type of thing that you've seen. It's like this is one of the ones on the list where it's like no other software does what it can do. Like it, it's mm -hmm. it's absolutely just incredible. I don't know what kind of voodoo they're doing at Adobe, but like, it's crazy. It's well, crazy. dude, what I love about this is that Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, they're tough to learn if you've never used them before. Like, yeah. honestly, there should be entire university courses, maybe there are dedicated to learning them because they're so capable, they're so robust, mm -hmm. there's so much functionality, you can do almost anything it seems like on them. And if you do know them, you have a huge advantage as a graphic yeah. designer. That's what most graphic designers use as their go-to tool, right? But yeah. for us who are not everyday graphic designers, it's hard to learn these. Like you just wanted to make one change and you spend like five hours watching YouTube videos on how to just remove yeah. like the background from something. And so to be able to give prompts and to have it do it for us, man, like I know for me, that can save me a ton of time because I do sometimes create designs in Photoshop and Illustrator, but I'm not very good and it takes a really long time. That's why I outsource most of it to freelancers. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, oh, this will be super simple. All I need to do is remove this background. I'll just do that myself. And then I go in there like five hours later, it's still not done, but hopefully this will be the answer to that. 
Number nine on the list is Canva. And basically, like we all kind of know what Canva is, but they've been putting in a lot of different AI tools inside Canva, different AI apps mm. and different things you can do. I only put two of the Canva AI tools on this list because I thought they were probably the best out of the bunch. Canva like has text to image and different things, but it's just not there yet. It's just not as good. Like, in my opinion, if you're gonna do like text to image AI, just go with Mid Journey Leonardo. They're a billion times better right now than Canva. But mm -hmm. Canva does have some really simple and interesting tools. So two of those that I wanted to highlight in this is Magic Edit and Magic Eraser. So Magic Edit is essentially the same thing we just talked about with Photoshop Generative Fill, just much simpler. So, mm -hmm. um, so essentially, like, let's imagine that you have a picture of your desk with your computer sitting on it. You've got your mug sitting, coffee mug sitting there. You've got the mouse and the keyboard, and you're you're wanting to use that for something and that image. And you're like, well, I accidentally left my key, my car keys sitting there on the desk, and I don't want that in the image. Well, instead of retaking the image, you can use Magic Edit to just highlight your keys and remove them off the table, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, let's say you took a picture of a wall and there's a TV on the wall and you're like, well, I just want the wall. I don't want the TV. You can just erase the TV and it'll just generate more wall for you, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's a million examples of this. You could take a picture of a street with cars on it. You could remove a car, you know, mm -hmm. like things like that. I mean, um, so magic, it's called Magic Edit. The other mm -hmm. one, very similar, which actually what I was just referring to was more Magic Eraser. Magic Edit, right. you can replace the items, right? Like, so I could say, instead of keys, I want something else there. Instead of a car, I want something else there. But with Magic Eraser, you can just erase them. So I was kind of got that backwards there. But that's essentially what those tools, two tools are. Magic Edit lets you replace items in a photo. Magic Eraser lets you erase items in a photo. And I think those are some of the more useful AI tools in Canva. Yeah, you can also add or, or modify photos with um, yeah. with Magic Edit. But uh, yeah, C Canva has really been rolling out AI tools, I think, to you know stay competitive. Um, they do have other ones. Um, they have Magic Write, and like I have used, I've, I've played around with Magic Write. Um, it's good, but like it's kind of like you can use ChatGPT to do the same yeah. thing. You could use Shopify Magic to do the same thing. So. Um, there, there's a lot of tools out there that are similar to it already. And then the, I agree the text to image, I, I played around with it. It was not good. Uh, it's going to get better. That's, that's, I keep the, going back yeah. to it. I keep going yeah. back to it thinking like, is it gotten any better? And then it's, like, <laughs> it's not there yet. <laughs> yeah, but it will, you know, it's machine learning. So these things do get better. Um, I think more people are going to start to adopt them and they're going to get better, but I agree with you. That one's not, not quite there yet. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is fun playing around with the AI tools in Canva. The last one on the list, number 10, is that you've made it, you've made it to number 10. The <laughs> last one on the list is kind of a wild card. This is a Shopify app, and it's called Manifest AI Chatbot. So I was looking through some of these different, different apps in the store, and this is one that kind of caught my eye. So Manifest AI Chatbot. So what this is, it's an AI chatbot app for your Shopify store that can increase revenue, reduce customer support tickets, and assist customers in the shopping process. It talks like a human, learns your product catalog, provides accurate answers to questions. Get this, it's trained in 95 plus languages. Whoa! Train, train your VA on that one. Right. right? right. <laughs> and here's, here's what's crazy. They claim that it takes 30 seconds to set up. What? They claim that. What's, uh, what's cool about these kind of apps, what's, what's especially cool about these kind of apps, this is one thing that I kind of realized as I was, I was looking this up and, and really like learning about it, is they can, these apps, this AI can pull from millions of conversations they've had in other stores with other brands and they can process that information basically instantly. So here's what's That's cool. So cool. Like your, your apparel brand, although it is unique in some ways, it's also very, very not unique and in a lot of other ways, it's actually very similar to thousands and millions of businesses out there, right? Like yeah. everybody listening to this podcast, like we're in the e-commerce space. So we have tons of similarities with other e-commerce brands. And what these what AI allows us to do is these apps can, can learn from all of the conversations and 
you know, um, data that it has from all of these, these brands and stores that it's working with, and it can apply that to our brand. So common issues that it's facing with other stores, it knows how to handle them for our store because it's already doing it with these other stores. So mm -hmm. I thought this was especially cool. And they had some bold claims in there and there's a bunch of other apps that do similar things. But, um, any thoughts on that, Adrian? Dude, AI chatbot provides 24 seven human like customer support via live chat. It almost sounds too good to be true. Yeah. Although I know, I know it's, it's, it's coming. We knew this was going to come. Um, but I would be curious. I haven't played around with it, but I would be really curious to talk to someone who's using this for their business yeah. to see their thoughts, like their initial thoughts about kind of the accuracy and um, how much time it saves them. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like this could be like, if it is what it says, game changer, man, mm -hmm. game changer for customer support. Yeah, it, it looks it looks pretty wild. And I think it's definitely early. It you can see there's like there's not a lot of reviews on it and everything, but um, it looks pretty cool. And it's just, it, if anything, it gives us the, it shows us a little bit about where it's going with some of these tools. Right. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, man, I think that, I think that wraps up our list. Uh, yeah. this is a fun episode. I get passionate this about this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can really, we can really nerd out over this AI stuff, but it's so cool. You know, all the tools that are out there and available, it can be overwhelming, but there's some really, really good ones mm -hmm. that people can, can start applying today. And a lot of them are really easy to use, like ChatGPT, for example. If you want to like just have some fun with AI and just dip your toes in and get your feet wet, go set up a ChatGPT account and just have some fun with it. Start writing out some prompts and maybe even start finding ways that it can help you with your business today and then leverage that stuff. So um, yeah, this was a lot of fun, Carrie. Uh, if anyone has any questions about any of these, um, what we'll do is we'll include the links in the show notes. So I'll collect the links to all the tools that we mentioned on this episode so that you can just go and access them. Um, and if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us, um, Carrie at Carrie Egler on Instagram or YouTube, Adrian at Adrian Von Arks, um, on TikTok or at Ecom Legends Academy on Instagram. Uh, yeah, man, this was a lot of fun. And is there anything else that you want to say, Carrie? No. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Cool. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please leave us an honest review on whichever podcast platform you are listening on. Thanks again and have a great day. Hey.